Hey guys, so having now spent a week with the new Gollum video game, I wanted to give you all my final thoughts on it. You may recall a few months ago, I released a video talking about my experience playing a preview beta version of the game. And while the animations were rough, it seemed like a game with some level of promise. It has an interesting premise and focuses on one of Tolkien's most iconic, tragic, and interesting characters. Now I've seen a lot of reviewers panning the decision to have players play as Gollum, but I gotta say I think it's an idea that could be interesting if executed really well. First off, let's start with the thing that I was most interested in for this game for some time now, the lore. As with anything adapting Tolkien's world that's dealing with bits and pieces of information, there's a fair amount of original events and characters within the story. And for the most part, I think these original aspects work pretty well. I found myself legitimately interested in the Candleman character around the time he's recounting the tale of Aarnor, the last king of Gondor. There's other things that are directly from the books, like a reference to Baron and Luthien, a brief glimpse of Erebor, Gandalf's interrogation, and a moment with Gollum just as it's described by Legolas at the Council of Elrond. However, it feels like these moments are just too few and far between to make this a must-buy for lore fans. Omissions like Aragorn capturing and traveling with Gollum seem like something that would have made for a great cutscene at the very least, if not an entire level of the game. Now, a lot of reviews that I've seen have focused on the graphics and gameplay, and as I'm just a Tolkien fan who tends to play only a few games per year, I'll defer to those judgments when it comes to things like performance and how this compares to other stealth games. That being said, even I could notice some of the buggy issues this game had at launch, and I was surprised how taxing it was to run on my PC considering the graphics of the game. Speaking of the graphics, much has been said about the quality elsewhere. Personally, I didn't mind the graphics looking like they were from the Xbox 360 era, as I knew this game was coming from an independent publisher. I simply never expected this game to compete with even last-gen games like The Shadow of Mordor, in terms of graphics, gameplay, or complexity. But the lower expectations I had in terms of these categories were not the same as the gaming community at large, and for good reason. And this brings up what is, in my opinion, the biggest issue with the Lord of the Rings Gollum. The pricing. Quite simply, this game had no business being released while priced as a AAA game. As I've alluded to, I never went into this game expecting it to be the heir apparent to the excellent Shadow of Mordor games. It's made by an indie developer, and as such, I went in expecting it to be more simple in general, including the visuals and gameplay. However, when a game like this carries a $60 price tag, and has an optional $10 DLC on top of that, it communicates to gamers that this is a game of a certain caliber, a level that Gollum simply does not achieve. I think if this game came out and was priced at, I don't know, like 30 bucks, the conversation around this game would be totally different. All of a sudden, the mindset shifts, because a $30 game doesn't carry the same expectations as a $60 game. Things like graphics and animations that feel two generations old become more forgivable in a more appropriately priced game. And if the game itself had brought a bit more variety of gameplay to the table, and not had some of the big glitch issues at launch, I think it could have been seen as a charming throwback to an older era, had it been marketed and priced as such. Unfortunately, the Gollum game just isn't as interesting or as fun as I hoped it would be. There's a lot in this game that feels repetitive, mundane, or buggy, or a combination thereof. The issues with the performance were enough that Daedalic released an apology, something that seems all too common with video games released nowadays, though an unfortunate typo certainly made this one stand out. I do think playing as Gollum is an interesting concept that has promise, but I wonder if it would work better if it was only a level or two of a much larger game featuring more playable characters. Real quick, I want to add just a general overall thought about the conversation about this game. I've seen a ton of hyperbolic statements about this game saying it's a cash grab or the worst game of all time, and I don't think either of these is actually the case, and it's more so just the latest example of how nowadays everything has to be declared either the best or the worst thing ever. I think folks are often too quick to label something as cash grab simply because they don't like it or it doesn't meet expectations. At the end of the day, every game, movie, TV show, and product based on Middle Earth is made in hopes of making money. And being so cavalier to label something as a cash grab, I think is an insult to people on the front lines who pour a lot of effort into said product. And as I've oftentimes found, have a real love of the source material. In conclusion, I want to give my final recommendation and thoughts on the game. 
If I had to give the Lord of the Rings Gollum a score, I'd probably go with something around a 5 out of 10. And part of the reason it gets that high rating is because of the lore moments that I enjoyed. There's nothing in this game lore-wise as outlandish as what we saw in the Shadow games. But when it comes to games, my personal opinion is that they should first and foremost be fun to play. Not that I don't enjoy and appreciate adherence to the lore and deep cut references, it's just that those things do little good if the game in question isn't a blast to play. I might be willing to bump this game up a point or so if it were more reasonably priced for the experience it provides gamers. As for my recommendation, if you're a big time Lord of the Rings fan or someone who is really into stealth games, I'd say wait for the game to go on sale. You'll feel a lot better about the purchase if you do. If you're not a big Tolkien fan and just someone who is a general gamer, there's plenty of other things to be had that will get you more bang for your buck, especially in the $60 price range. So yeah, at the end of the day, the Gollum game wasn't the smash hit I hoped it would be, but I do think there's reason to be optimistic for the future of Middle Earth gaming. There's some things coming out this very year in both tabletop and video gaming that show promise. And as I've said before, I think the Embracer purchase of Middle Earth Enterprises will bring even more Middle Earth video games in the near future. And yeah, there's always a chance we'll get some clunkers in the years to come, but you never know when we might get a new all-time classic. If the reception to the Lord of the Rings Gollum proves anything, I think it shows that expectations are pretty high when it comes to adapting Tolkien's world, no matter the medium. Personally, I'm hoping at some point for a massive open world game where we get to explore all of Middle-earth, and something that has the kind of investment and quality that we've seen other nerdy cornerstone franchises get in recent years. But only time will tell.